government to advance key programs in hinterland and river Rhine communities with focus on agriculture, infrastructure, and youth development. Georgetown, Guyana. The government of Guyana is set to advance its annual programs in hinterland and river Rhine communities, placing significant emphasis on key areas such as agriculture, infrastructure, tourism, and the development of women and youth. This announcement was made by Minister of Amerindian Affairs, Pauline Sukai, during the opening of the National Tasheos Council, NTC, conference at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, Liliendal, on Monday. Minister Sukai highlighted that since August 2020, there has been a marked shift from the neglect that previously plagued many hinterland and river Rhine communities. Over the past four years, these regions have witnessed substantial improvements, including better access to potable water, roads, schools, social services, investment grants, land titles, bridges, and housing. The government's ongoing transformation efforts include the distribution of solar home systems, with over 30,000 solar panels already provided to residents. Minister Sukhai assured that communities yet to receive solar panels will be equipped soon. In her address, Minister Sukhai also underscored the importance of youth development, noting that many Amerindian youths have benefited from scholarships through the Guyana Online Academy of Learning, GOAL, which aims to enhance their livelihoods and foster community development. Additionally, the Community Service Officers, CSOs, program has provided skill training and employment opportunities to numerous Amerindians, empowering them to actively participate in their community's growth. Our young people are empowered. Their capacities are built to ensure that they can participate and contribute to community development, Minister Sukai emphasized, noting the importance of engaging Amerindian youths at the village level. A key aspect of the ministry's financial support to Amerindian villages is the provision of investment grants aimed at fostering sustainable economic growth. These grants, along with carbon credit funds, are allocated to each Amerindian community to support diverse projects, including ecotourism, agriculture, and infrastructure development. The government remains committed to advancing land titling and demarcation efforts, with Guyana being the only country with a dedicated land titling unit actively working for indigenous peoples. Minister Sukhai expressed pride in the government's partnership with the National Tasheos Council, which she described as the legitimate representative of Amerindian people. She also highlighted the government's ongoing review of existing legislation to strengthen indigenous rights and benefits under the law. This year's National Tasheos Council NTC, conference, themed Astute Leadership for the Amerindian People, is being held from August 19th to 23rd. The conference provides a platform for Amerindian leaders to engage directly with President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, other government ministers, and technical officers, discussing issues affecting their communities and offering recommendations for further development. Government accelerates internet connectivity for 203 hinterland and river Rhine communities. Georgetown, Guyana. The government of Guyana is aggressively pursuing the completion of internet connectivity in 203 hinterland and river Rhine communities, aiming to bridge the digital divide between these areas and the coastal regions. This significant initiative is being carried out through the office of the Prime Minister. Minister of Amerindian Affairs, Pauline Sukai, announced this during the opening of the National Tasheos Council, NTC, conference at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, Liliendal, on Monday. Minister Sukhai shared that the project is nearing completion and that within a few short months, all 203 villages will be fully connected to the Internet. This will further transform hinterland communities and open up numerous opportunities for residents, Minister Sukhai stated, emphasizing the profound impact that this connectivity will have on the region. In addition to enhancing daily life, the initiative will greatly benefit individuals pursuing studies through the Guyana Online Academy of Learning, GOAL providing them with the necessary digital access to succeed in their educational endeavors. The Office of the Prime Minister has also been actively involved in training managers of the Information and Communication Technology, ICT, hubs in these communities over the past 18 months. This training is designed to equip them with the relevant skills and knowledge to effectively manage the ICT hubs and ensure their long-term sustainability. Earlier this month, Prime Minister Brigadier, Redded, Mark Phillips disclosed that high-speed internet would soon be rolled out in villages across Region 7 as part of the broader national effort. To date, 138 ICT hubs have already been constructed in many hinterland and river Rhine communities, with the government planning to build a total of 200 hubs by the end of 2024. Over the past three years, more than $1 billion has been invested in ICT development across the country, reflecting the government's commitment to enhancing digital access and connectivity for all Guyanese. 
The ongoing efforts to expand Internet access underscore the government's dedication to ensuring that hinterland and riverine communities are not left behind in the nation's digital transformation. Guyana to surpass 2M tons of aggregates this year, Min Barrett. With the rapid rate of infrastructural transformation taking place across the country, Guyana is set to produce over 2 million tons of aggregates by 2024 to meet the rising demand for building materials. This was disclosed by Minister of Natural Resources, Vikram Barrett, as he assessed the extensive progress made in the mining sector over the past four years. Minister of Natural Resources, Vikram Barrett, Middle, Permanent Secretary to the Ministry, Jocelyn McKenzie, and Commissioner of the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, GGMC, Newell Dennison. He provided the update during a recent media briefing at the Guyana Forestry Commission Complex in Kingston, Georgetown. Aggregates are raw materials produced from natural resources, extracted from pits and quarries. These include gravel, crushed stone, loam and sand, among others. We are poised to surpass the 2 million. Maybe we will get up to 2.5 million tons of aggregates in 2024, which is a significant achievement and improvement from 2020 to now, the minister disclosed. Since the PPP-C government took office in 2020, the production of aggregates has increased significantly. In 2020, annual production stood at 600,000 tons. By mid-2023, approximately 900,000 tons had already been produced, and by the end of July this year, the country's aggregate production had reached 1.6 million tons. This is because of the expansion of the quarry sector, the refinancing and the additional investment being made by the existing and long-standing quarry operators, and also the new licenses that we would have issued over the last few years. Some of those quarries are now coming into operation and production, Minister Barrett explained. The minister further noted that the amount expected in this year is likely to increase in 2025 as new quarries are preparing to begin production next year. Aggregates being extracted from a mining location in the country. He highlighted that the demand for aggregates in the infrastructure industry is expected to grow even further in the coming years. It is projected that in two to three years, Guyana will require over 5 million tons of aggregates. The Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, GGMC, is making preparations to ensure that within another few years, we will be in a position to produce, if not all, most of what the demand is locally, the Natural Resources Minister highlighted. Meanwhile, turning his attention to the bauxite industry, Minister Barrett acknowledged that the sector had been in decline for some time, but is now set to rebound with two major companies in operation. Today, we are turning it around with the two main companies operating. That is Jinmen, Guyana Industrial Minerals Incorporated, first bauxite in the Banasica area and with Bozai operating in the Linden area, the minister said. Due to significant investment by Bozai, the GGMC has issued a permit for a remnant deposit in the Karakara area in Linden. This will significantly boost the company's output. The company's investment is also creating increased employment for the residents of Region 10. President Ali highlights accelerated development of Amerindian rights under PPP-C governments at National Tasheo's Council Conference. Georgetown, Guyana, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali underscored the significant advancements in Amerindian rights and development under successive PPP-C governments during the opening ceremony of the National Tasheo's Council, NTC, Conference 2024, held at the Arthur Chung Conference Center on Monday. In his address, President Ali emphasized the transformative impact of various government programs and initiatives that have empowered Amerindian communities, providing them with more opportunities to pursue their dreams and aspirations. He contrasted the progress made since 1992 with the prior era of marginalization and exclusion experienced by indigenous peoples under previous administrations. Amerindians were underrepresented and had little influence over national policies. Your needs were inconsequential to the PNC government at that time, President Ali remarked, recalling the limited access to education, health care, and social welfare that led to poverty rates of nearly 80% in indigenous villages across Guyana. President Ali highlighted the current reality where Amerindian villages now benefit from a range of experts and resources, contributing to their overall enhancement and the enjoyment of freedom of expression. Today, you're not dreaming, you are achieving, he stated, noting that Amerindian youth now have access to secondary and tertiary education, with many pursuing careers as doctors, teachers, lawyers, engineers, and other professionals. The government's commitment to Amerindian and hinterland development has been reinforced through substantial investments in essential services and infrastructure. Over the past four years, billions have been allocated to improve health care, education, energy, and social welfare. 
Notable infrastructure improvements include $20 billion invested in hinterland roads by the Ministry of Public Works and an additional $9 billion by the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, GGMC. Residents are also benefiting from first-time electricity access as the hinterland electrification program expands to approximately 30,000 households. In education, 42 nursery and 16 secondary schools are under construction in 2024 alone, while around 5,000 youths are pursuing their studies through the Guyana Online Academy of Learning goal. Additionally, 700 teachers are being trained to enhance education in hinterland regions for future generations. President Ali also highlighted the government's efforts to achieve self-sufficiency in food production, with over $4 billion invested in hinterland agriculture. Youths are being empowered through the Youth Entrepreneurship and Apprenticeship Program, YEAP, which has employed nearly 2,800 young people and provided them with training opportunities across various sectors. The President reaffirmed that Amerindian land rights are guaranteed under the Amerindian Act of 2006, enacted by the PPP-C administration. Since 2020, 14 land titles have been granted to indigenous communities. Furthermore, President Ali announced plans to award contracts totaling up to $10 million directly to villages for labor-intensive projects, demonstrating the government's commitment to empowering local communities. The week-long National Tesheo's Council Conference provides a platform for Amerindian leaders to engage directly with the president and his cabinet members, addressing issues affecting their communities and offering recommendations to further their development. Seven villages receive certificate of title, absolute grants at NTC. Biogas Duishunno, Duishunno Duichar. The government has demonstrated its commitment to advancing Amerindian land rights by delivering five absolute grants for extension and two certificate of titles to seven Amerindian villages. The villages that received absolute grants are Hotakwai, Hobadai, and Red Hill in Region 1 and Akawini in Region 2. Arau Village in Region 7 and Karasabai in Region 9 received their certificate of title. Karasabai Central Tesheo, David Albert, President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali and Minister of Amerindian Affairs, Pauline Sukhai presented the land documents to Tesheos of the respective villages during the opening of the one-week National Tesheos Council, NTC, conference at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, ACCC, on Monday. The village leaders expressed their excitement upon receiving their long-anticipated documents, which now legally recognize the lands they occupy. Karasabai Central Tesheo, David Albert, applauded the government for fulfilling their dreams, acknowledging that over 4,000 residents in this sub-district are now legally owned. It was something that we really wanted, for a very long time and finally we got through with it, he expressed. Similarly, aroused Tesheo, Manuel Charlie, commended the government for facilitating the important activity. The village now has legal ownership of 28,875 acres of land. Hodakwai's Tesheo, Carson Village, highlighted the positive impact of the extended 3,764 acres of land on the village's agriculture activities, emphasizing the potential for improved livelihoods and economic progress. We can gain money in our village and that we can go forward in our daily lives, he remarked. Meanwhile, President Ali acknowledged the hard work of the Amerindian land titling, Alt unit in ensuring that villages receive their land rights. Amerindian land rights are governed under the Amerindian Act of 2006, a legislation enacted by the PPP-C administration. Aroused to Sheo, Manuel Charlie. The Alt project is an initiative aimed at empowering Amerindian communities to obtain official recognition and legal ownership of their traditional lands and natural resources. By securing land tenure rights through titling and demarcation, the project aims to enhance the social and economic development prospects of Amerindian communities. This process will bolster land tenure security and expand the asset base of Amerindians, consequently facilitating more effective long-term planning for their sustainable development and well-being. More indigenous people are expected to get legal recognition for their lands, with a whopping $800 million budgetary allocation set aside by the government for the ALT project in 2024.